Hey, what's going on, guys? This is uh, Travels of Preston, a.k.a. Mr. Travels. And I'm here on another adventure. This one uh, kind of solo dolo, but right now I'm at uh, James Madison, the fourth president of the United States um, estate, which uh, is Mount Pillar. So as you can see, so currently I'm at the at the visitor center. I'm about to go in, but I just wanted to touch base with you guys, let you know what's going on. Um, it's kind of early in the morning here. But uh, which I think is the best time, so it'll be you know less uh, people, so you know I can maybe get some good shots and things of that nature. And I just want to take this time to say thank you for uh, you know looking at my show, supporting me uh, for the last couple of months. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and also like I said, how the um, the YouTube algorithm works. Hey, you gotta like and subscribe and watch the whole video in its entirety. And just like I said, just let me know what you think. And um, hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to start uh, really traveling out, uh, you know, venturing out a little bit further and getting some uh, good destinations. All right, so let's go inside and see what's going on. All right, so guys, yeah, I just got done with the ticketing center. Um, I highly suggest that you purchase your tickets online before you get here. Just to avoid all the confusion and stuff like that. And that way you can ensure that you actually get in on the same day at the time that you re actually request. So right now, um, just, just walking around the visitor center, as you can see uh, behind me, and uh, I'm about to start walking towards the mansion and then uh, the slave cemetery. So let me show you the sign. So I have actually um, I have a tour uh, that should be starting pretty soon within the next hour or so. So I'm probably going to walk back towards the visitor center because that's the starting point. So right now I'm just uh, just going to walk towards the mansion, take a few pictures outside and, you know, see what I can see. And, you know, just take it all, just take it all in pretty much. So they got a couple of guidelines for uh, visitors, as you can see. So yeah, like I said, you, you want to make sure that you go online, go to the website, you know, read all the guidelines, what's going on, things of that nature. It's a very open area. Like when you come off the highway, um, you have to pretty much drive probably about a couple of miles back up into the wood area. And when you come in, you see like a little racetrack to the right hand side. And then you pretty much drive up on the mansion, but then you have to bear to the right to go to the visitor center. So let me turn the camera on so you can see. So over that direction would be the, uh, the racetrack I was talking about. Like this land is huge. Um, <laughs> oh, got to the mansion a lot quicker than I thought. It looked like it was going to be a further walk, but uh, as you can see, it's starting to come up already. So, yeah, so obviously I can't go inside the mansion right now until the tour starts. But, you know, I'm going to take some get, some get some pictures, see what I can see, explore a little bit up into the tour, and then I'll uh, see what we can learn. All right, stay tuned. So right now I'm directly in front of uh, James Madison House. Um, looks pretty impressive. I mean, especially for that time period. Turn the camera around so you can see. So yeah, you can kind of see uh, it's uh, it's brick. There's <laughs> a lot of brick on here. So it's a lot different than um, this one. Like I think after this one, this would be my third president house. Uh, we went to Mount Vernon. Uh, we went to Thomas Jefferson's, uh, Monticello, and now we at Mount Pillar. So I definitely probably want to do like another little episode just to recap, you know, the differences that I've noticed at, uh, at each location. 
because it actually kind of get a little bit more splendid. Um, can't wait to go inside because, uh, like I said, my pillar was, um, I'm sorry, not my pillar, uh, Monticello was really nice. Um, because I guess, you know, Jefferson, like I said, he took the time to actually go to, you know, France and become inspired and things of that nature. So he took a lot of that French culture with him back to, back to America when he thought about building his house and hence the reason why it took 40 years. So I'm not sure how long this took to build, but um, as you can see, let me turn the camera around. But I will say his property is massive. I mean, just, I mean, I, I'm not sure where his property began and end, but it is huge. And like I said, that's the road that you come up um, when you first come in. And then a little bit to the left is the actual racetrack that actually I seen uh, probably about four people riding horses just, you know, uh, taking laps around the, the track. I'm going to walk down here to this little uh, gazebo looking thing and uh, see what it is down here. They have a couple of signs, so let's check it out, see what it says. Just notice how much grass, like how long it will take to cut and how many people it would take to ma you know, maintain this yard on top of your normal daily duties. Insane. So yeah, guys, we're just uh, walking. So right now, as you can see, the visitor center is right there. Towards that way would be the mansion, so I got my back to it right now. Just walk in to see what we can see. Uh, you can see tractor trailers in the back. Got some horses over there. Let's see. I'm walking towards the cemetery to see what that is. Um, I know there's a slave um, cemetery, and I'm assuming that big uh, monument over there uh, will be James Madison's grave. I'm going to I'm gonna have to assume. Not sure what this is. Uh, I think it's a nursery or something like that. So I'm just gonna keep walking to see what it is. So this is Mount Pleasant, Knights of the Golden Horseshoe. Hmm. So this is known as the Knights of the Golden Horseshoe for the small gold horseshoe token Spotswood gave his friends to commemorate the trip. So, like it right there. So they say we have no drawings or descriptions of Mount Pleasant, but I guess it was well preserved. So uh, excavations reveal the remains of the main house, which look like the main house right there. You got the slave quarter, the kitchen, the main house, cellars and things of that nature. Apparently he had a weird death. Uh, I guess they said he was poisoned. Oh, they charged, uh, I guess, three of the slaves um, with his murder. So, looks like the three slaves were uh, charged, convicted, obviously, and uh, they was hung. I'm sure they didn't get due process. So, that's another story, though. So let's see. Got a little sign coming up right now. Let me see what's going on. Okay. So we got the Madison Family Cemetery and then the Slay Cemetery is that way. So when I get done with the Madison Cemetery, hopefully I have enough time before my uh, tour 
that I can see the slave, uh, slave cemetery. So this was a home, I'm mean, sorry, home farm complex. So apparently uh, the Madisons had several farms. Um, let's see. Oh, 70 acres of field crops, livestock. Wow. So this is a map of uh, 1844. The overseer's house between the main house and the Madison Mill. Oh, they have a sign over here. See what this one says. Closer look at the horses. My kids love horses, so they would have got a kick out of that. I had to bring them back out here. Oh, look at the sign. Great. So apparently they took that sign off. <laughs> so the Madison Family Cemetery restored to the vision and generosity of the Virginia Daughters of the American Revolution. So unlike one of the differences, unlike uh, Thomas Jefferson, you couldn't go into Thomas Jefferson's uh, burial area so obviously here you can and just like mount vernon where george washington and his uh, wife martha are buried at they're entombed um in an enclosure so you can only get but so close to that too so and if you watch my previous videos you would uh, notice that so and if you haven't watched that video please you know check that out as well so that's james medicines that's where he's buried at and these are the people, I guess, that keep this area up. Madison, born March 16th, 1751, died June 28th, 1836. In memory of Dolly Payne, James Medicine born. It's kind of hard to make out, but so I'm not really sure if that's his, if this is his wife. Um, I'm probably have to assume it's probably his wife or a daughter or something like that, but it's not much to his uh his obelisk and all this, but uh It's pretty plain Jane, to be honest with you. I will have to say the first and second president had a lot more going on. But it's all interesting, like I said. And uh, Oh, my wife. That's what it says. Let's see what this. So it's a very small burial plot. But anyway, I digress. I'm going to start walking back towards the visitor center and get ready for this tour and catch you guys on the tour. He was a really astute business person and he started realizing that tobacco was, although lucrative, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sustainable. Mm. So he lets mom kind of continue running the tobacco plantation. Meanwhile, he is purchasing slaves having slaves trained uh, to kind of start building a, what do I want to call it? Like a business empire. One thing he establishes is a forge and this iron forge, it's using all the hard wood that's being cut down. Yeah. This iron forge has eight enslaved workers, one enslaved overseer by the name of Moses. And this, this iron forge 
they're outfitting all of the other planters that are moving into the area. Remember, the Madisons kind of got here first. And so that's the engine, this business diversification built on enslaved labor that's driving this generational wealth that the Madisons are accumulating. Madison, James Madison Sr. does indeed become the richest, most powerful man in this uh, Orange County. Hi, good morning. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because that's like, like I said yesterday when I found out that Thomas Jefferson pretty much died broke. Uh -huh. That was, threw me off. Oh. I was like, how did he die, you know, broke or whatever, but. Right. So, that's a really good question, and, and we'll talk about it some more, but the short answer is American society was built on tobacco, mm -hmm. and tobacco required slave labor. Okay. When the southern mid-Atlantic states, like Virginia and Maryland, when the tobacco economy dies, they're all of these slaves. There's nothing for them to do. Slaves become the number one source of wealth for these planters like James Madison. Okay. So that's why they start selling slaves to the deep south because now uh, the cotton gin has happened. Have, okay. So the bottom has fallen out of their economy. Okay. And I heard one historian say like taking slaves out of this economy at that time period would be like taking fossil fuels out of our economy today. Ooh. Yeah, that's very important. <laughs> oh, man. Because, I mean, but that is the foundation of this society. Yeah. You know, it was, it was built that way from day one. Long legacy. Oh, kind of a fun fact. This is an original road that ran in front of the house back in James Madison's lifetime. The archaeologists found it. Mm -hmm. um, they paved it like this just for guests. But this fence, we found the post hole for every little post in that fence so that they could re recreate that as well. Wow. So everything is really informed on scholarship. So huh. this house, right here, we're reconstructing it. And you can see um, we're getting ready to whitewash it. Mm -hmm. We found the footprint of that building years ago. We always thought it was just a kitchen. But if you look at the top, you see the white band that runs around the top of that chimney? Yes. The sun, it's really difficult with the sun, but there's a white band around the top of that chimney as well. Mm -hmm. All of them. Well, those, okay, those three. And so our so the archaeologists found that chimney just right underneath the soil. And uh, our architectural historian, she took a look at it and said, that's just really too fancy for a kitchen. It just doesn't make sense. So she started doing research and uh, come to find out they found a footprint just like that in the eastern shore of Virginia and it's formed called the Planter's Cottage. Okay. So while Madison's grandmother, Frances, is still maintaining the family seat down there, James Madison Sr. starts building that house for his family. That little house? That little house right there. <laughs> <laughs> and he had 12 children. 12 children. Right. <laughs> okay. So that was his house while mom was still alive. He started building that about 1751. That's the year James Madison was born. So that's his boyhood home until about the age of 10. When James Madison, our future president, um, is 10, 1761, that's when his grandmother dies, and that's when construction starts on the big that house. house there. Exactly. Okay. So I think that's interesting that Madison Sr. waited until his mother was dead. I guess out of respect, or maybe... Or, yeah, probably. Uh, it, it's interesting to think of her as a really powerful matriarch in that way. But you can see the first house was just kind of built down there to get started, to make money. This house was built to make a very different statement. And it's very much in keeping with Madison Senior's status in this community. Yeah, that's what I noticed about like Mount Vernon. It has that massive like area where you kind of like see the house in the background mm -hmm. and it takes you forever to come to it and stuff like that. So. Exactly. It's all about appearances. 
Um, this landscape you see around here, with a lot of these lovely trees, this would not have existed in Madison Senior's lifetime. You know, he's really using the, the fruits of the landscape to fuel the forge and to make money. But James Madison, the president, once he inherits this property, he really wants it to be like, look at the wealth of America, look at this pastoral scene, look at this rural shrine up here on the hill, and I am the sage of Montpelier. So it's very <laughs> intentional. So we'll go over to the main house. I kind of glossed over, I haven't told you about James Madison's boyhood. So I'll tell you a little more about that. I guess we'll kind of stand over maybe in the yard a little bit where you won't be looking right into the sun. Okay. think we're going to get away from it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I don't think we can hide from it. So, James Madison was a boy of 10 when this home was built. And the original home would have been a Georgian mansion. That was the original front door. Oh, this one? Uh-huh, that right there was the original front door. Okay. You can see the ghost of the original pediment that was yes. over that door. The original house would have gone from that downspout there. Mm -hmm. This portico did not exist, but that was put on later. Oh. It's just a smaller porch. That central entranceway did not exist. And the original house ended right there. Right on the white line is yeah, okay. Yeah, you can see that ghost. Symmetry was really important in that time period. And um, so this house would have been five bays over five bays. That room right up there is the room where James Madison envisioned what would become the United States Constitution. He would have been looking out of that window, looking that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we just got done with uh, the tour. Couldn't tape the whole thing. Um, that was not allowed, but really good informational tour. Learned a lot about James Madison and um, I guess a little bit pretty much how he was slightly progressive, at, uh, especially for his time period. Uh, so right now, as you can see, this house is right here. They have a couple of uh, slave quarters built. Uh, right here, the first two houses are um, are smoke houses, and then uh, right here would be a stable quarters. So this is kind of like where the tour ends. So we just did like a round robin. Um, right here would be the visitor center. So we just took that path going around to the front of the house and just came back right around. So it wasn't a long tour, about an hour. So. I would highly recommend um, if you come out here, you know, no more than say two and a half hours, maybe um, just enough time to walk around, read all the signs. Uh, it's a sign right here. This is, uh, this is the South Yard right here. So as you can see what I was saying, the, uh, the quarters, the smoke houses, the North Quarter, the kitchen. So. They're still digging up a lot of areas around here. Like I said, the, uh, she told us that the slave cemetery that we that I saw earlier, that they originally found 30 to 40 uh, graves, but they came back later on with like better technology. And they said they think it's about 300 graves. So I guess it was assumed that slaves were buried just throughout um, uh, Mount Pillar, But in actuality, they think that's pretty much the central location of that. Uh, for all the slaves. So uh, this concludes James Madison, Mount Pillar. And I want to say thank you for watching and supporting. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, let me what you think. And uh, until next Monday.
Peace.